live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we begin at 5 with forewarned weather. Our first big winter storm of the year headed our way. Winter storm warning set to go into effect for parts of the region. Now take a look at some live pictures from Houston. There, it's hitting a severe storms and confirmed tornadoes on the ground. You can see the destruction for yourself there. Here in Metro Detroit, it's going to be a different story. Good evening, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. I want to get you right over to Brandon Rue to start things off. He's in for Kim Adams tonight. Uh, still looking at about midday tomorrow, I guess, Brandon. For the heaviest snow, it'll start during the morning drive, but we'll pick up in intensity through the day tomorrow. You can see the warnings and watches that come all the way through the Midwest into Detroit, but the southern edge of this right now is wreaking all sorts of havoc down south. We're seeing uh, active tornado warnings in the Beaumont, Texas area moving into Louisiana here, but this is a very devastating line of storms that has already rocked through Houston and certainly something we're keeping an eye on and you'll be hearing a lot about here over the next day or two after this storm line passes. For us, we're on the northern fringe of it, right? So we're expecting the winter part of the storm, the winter weather. It was near 40 earlier here as we look live in Ann Arbor. Do expect a little increase in cloud cover ahead of this storm coming in Wednesday. Wind chills are 20s to lower 30s as you are heading out and about. We again will see increasing clouds, but it is Wednesday that we have the forewarn uh, weather alert day. So that means it will be a nasty one tomorrow. We've been through worse. We just haven't had a whole lot of these this year and all things are relative. Like the first snow of the season we will have issues, but again, not until tomorrow. So later tonight, it's low 30s coming up. We're going to talk more about the upgrade from winter storm watches to warnings and advisories, how much snow you'll get. But if you are heading out now, you need it. Now we've got you covered the forewarn weather app. You can hold your phone camera right up to the QR code in the middle there. It'll get you right to our app, but we've got videos, all the snow data for Wednesday and other storms coming later this week. It's all there in the forewarn weather app. And it's so funny. It's taken us almost to February here. <laughs> looking at our first big snowfall of 2023. Yeah, and of course there are kids across the state watching closely to see if they get that first <laughs> snow day of the school yeah. year. But this storm may prove a tough one for school superintendents with the authority to make that call. With a look at how they make this difficult decision, let's bring in Rod Maloney, who went down to the state line to see how they're wrestling with this call. Rod. Yeah, you know, Kimberly, you have to go down to the border because that's going to be the place that's probably going to get hit the hardest. And so they're watching very carefully. And as Brandon just told us, it's going to be midday tomorrow before we really get a lot of the snow. District superintendents can't wait that long to make a decision. So everybody's going to be taking a close look tonight to see if their school gets canceled. We're right on the fringe of getting hit the hardest. Bedford School Superintendent Dr. Carl Schultz sat in his temperance office this morning and watched the weather like a trained meteorologist. I think Monroe County is going to have a tough go tomorrow. Usually he rises at 4.30 a.m. and personally drives Bedford side roads for a gauge of just what his transportation and facility staff might be up against. But this time, it's different. The storm isn't supposed to arrive until after his usual 6 a.m. deadline for calling a snow day. We may very well have to call a snow day and only have a dusting on the ground because we know that if there's six inches of snow by 3 p.m. when our buses are rolling, it's very difficult. I have a thousand kids who drive at the high school. Yes, the drivers behind the wheel of his massive bus fleet are experienced still. I know that buses are heavy and large and people think that they move great on snow. They don't. And they make the turns become harder when they're in neighborhoods that are snow covered. People are putting their cars on the street because they're doing their driveways. Um, our buses routinely get stuck. Just for fun, Dr. Schultz sent out a Twitter poll question to students and staff this morning. More than 91% wanted a snow day called tonight. He says the poll is just for fun. Uh, if we're going to call it, we're probably going to call it based on the information we have this evening and give our, our give our families time to collect themselves, get, you know, get sitters and or maybe take a day off themselves. But uh, we want to get the most time we can. 
So if it sounds like he's leaning toward canceling, I think the answer to that would be yes, but you got to wait. Now, he puts it out on Twitter first, but he also puts it on clickondetroit.com. So everybody's going to want to keep their eyes on that tonight to see if, in fact, their district cancels tonight instead of tomorrow. Back to you. Rod, just curious, did you hear from any other school superintendents about this tough call? Yeah, down in... Yes, uh, the, the Monroe superintendent called me, said he's facing the exact same problem Carl Schultz is. Mm -hmm. uh, so be looking for them on Click on Detroit tonight, too. There's a pretty good chance they may cancel as well, especially since this is, would be the first cancellation of the year. They usually average about four. Yeah. Indeed. Okay, Rod, we appreciate it. Our other top story tonight, a Detroit man working to renovate a funeral home on the city's east side falls victim to a suspected fire bombing. And that is not the only suspicious fire in this neighborhood in the past few weeks. At least three fires have been reported along Chalmers Street near out, uh, East Outer Drive. People living there fear that a fire bug may be on the loose. Sean Lay following this story with, uh, he's been talking with investigators. What are they telling you, Sean? that all of this remains under investigation. And in this case, the man was trapped in his home. In this fire, had to be rescued. This is the third fire in that very area. Neighbors there, of course, on edge, telling me they need to take action to put a stop to this. I was asleep. Next thing I know, I hear a loud bang and uh, boom. Lawrence Pillow came within a minute or two from being overcome by toxic smoke last Friday morning. Something came crashing through his window. The apartment he keeps on the top floor of this building was engulfed in fire and he was trapped. So I went back in the bedroom and knocked the windows out and stuck my head out the windows because the flame was coming towards me. Pillow says Detroit Fire got there in time, put a ladder up and got Pillow out. Pillow has been renovating this funeral home on Chalmers in hopes of opening it back up. But he is just the latest victim along this stretch of Chalmers to fall victim to fire. Two weeks ago, a block away, a market and a liquor store burned the same way. Witnesses tell us they watched a car pull up, someone get out and fire bomb the market. Detroit Fire investigating all of these fires, but this is the first time someone was inside when fire struck. Pillow could have been killed. He's worried if this keeps up, someone will lose their life. I guess evidently um, they just burning up all the buildings over here on Charm. Two minutes later, I'd have been dead. Such a close call. They're so dangerous there in that neighborhood right now with these fires right up the block that way. You saw those pictures, guys. Mr. Pillow lost everything in this fire. His family has set up a GoFundMe to help him out. It's on our website. Click on Detroit.com. And as I say, Detroit Fire looking for video, looking for witnesses. All of it's under investigation. Back to you. Let's hope someone saw something that'll help. All right, Sean. Now let's move to California, which may understandably feel like a state under attack after three mass shootings in just the last three days. In all, 19 people have been killed, more than a dozen wounded. The deadliest of the attacks unfolding in communities just outside outside San Francisco and Los Angeles. Jay Gray is in Monterey Park outside the first of the three murder scenes with the latest. Jay. Good evening. Tragedy and grief stretching across this state right now. From the north to here in the south, investigators along with stunned and shattered communities searching for answers in the wake of the killing sprees. California reeling right now. Communities in the northern and southern parts of the state dealing with horrific mass shootings. We're just in absolute shock and disbelief um, that this occurred and our heart goes out to the victims and their families. 11 gunned down in Monterey Park while celebrating the Lunar New Year, one of the most significant holidays in the Asian community. To enjoy to be family and then someone just come out of the blue and just destroy the whole thing. In Half Moon Bay, just outside of San Francisco, seven workers murdered on the job at two mushroom farms. What a tragedy to see these innocent people lose their lives. And right now we just don't have the answers yet. Investigators aren't sure of the motive in any of the shootings, but say none appear to be acts of terror or hate crimes. The attacks in Monterey Park and Half Moon Bay aren't connected, but do have very unique similarities. Both suspects, elderly Asian Americans armed with semi-automatic handguns. Police say the killing sprees were likely fueled by a grudge or personal vendetta, with a vast majority of the victims, members of the Asian American community, and they share one more horrible similarity. Survivors in each community now struggling 
with the pain of overwhelming loss. Right now, police, along with help from federal agents, continue to gather evidence trying to piece together a motive in the attacks. In Monterey Park, California, Jay Gray, Local 4. Thank you, Jay. An arraignment for the suspect in the Half Moon Bay shooting is expected sometime tomorrow. We turn now to the new weekly coronavirus numbers from the state. 6,500 new cases being reported over this past week. So the average, a little more than 900 cases a day being reported. New COVID deaths spiked this week. 260 being reported over the last seven days. Detroit police are hoping video is the key to catching three carjacking suspects. Today, police released this security camera video or photo, I should say. It's from a carjacking on Monday, January 16th at a gas station on East Outer Drive. One of the suspects pointed a gun at the victim, then demanded his car keys and money. The 24 year old victim was not hurt. If you know anything, call Detroit police. Classified documents have now been found at the Indiana home of former Vice President Mike Pence. Pence's attorney says a small number of documents with classified markings were boxed and transported to Pence's home at the end of the Trump administration. The attorney says Pence was unaware that the documents were in his home. Justice Department not commenting so far, but of course this comes after classified documents were found at President Biden's home and former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate as well.